Hi, my name is Claire Boynton. I played young Nancy in The Silent Spy. And my name is Ken Boynton, and I play Carson Drew in a, a bunch of games now for up until this time. And we, we are, are spilling, spilling the tea, tea with, with Susie. Susie. And Alexa. Ken, welcome back to the podcast. And Claire, thank you for joining. Of course. Thank you. Nice to see you again. And it was fun last time, so I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, it's yeah, been a while me. since we've chatted, so it's, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, here we are. And welcome, Susie. You, you're joining in with me with questioning tonight. So, yes, I'm so excited. I have a whole list on my phone of questions. <laughs> okay. um, Great. We're ready to answer any and all of them yeah. or none of them, depending on how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> They're ready to be like, okay, bye and end call. <laughs> Just blank stares. Right at the frozen screen. Fancy who? What? Yeah. <laughs> um, I would like to start off uh, with you, Claire, if that's okay. Um, yeah, of course. Just, you know, are you interested in the voiceover industry? Kind of like your, you mean father, daughter, the two of you? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, are you interested in the voiceover side of things, Claire, at all? I definitely am interested in it. I have no idea how to dip my toe into it because well I did a lot when I was younger and I really enjoyed it um especially there's always snacks at the voiceover studio which is awesome best. but <laughs> yeah the best you have to the bowl of M&Ms the red vines like all of it but um I don't know I'm I feel like like he's so good at marketing himself and like you know just networking and, and meeting people and being confident in himself and I'm not really like there yet with myself I feel like I'd be like yeah you know here's my audition but if you don't like it it's fine <laughs> you know? it's like not that great so I don't know if I'm there yet to like put myself out there in that world and I know it's also very like uh celebrity uh infested right now so they're I don't know how much they're looking for like new talent but um I, I mean, I'd love to get back into it. I loved it when I was a kid. And um, I think it's so cool. So, um, Ken, do you give any advice to Claire? Like if she does, you know, like especially when she was younger, kind of with that kind of thing with voiceover? We did for when I was doing a lot of it. Um, I had clients and and people at the studios would call and say, hey, can can Claire come and do something for us? And so we went in and then a couple of things when auditions would come up, you know, we'd, we'd go ahead and record something in the home studio and send it in. And so it, it was sort of a, it was an easy kind of an easy and kind of thing. I never wanted to force it. I always found it super fun, but the business side of it is really hard. And especially now, I mean, now the best way to really proliferate a voiceover career, I think, is to do a podcast so people hear you all the time and get a sense of what who you are. We're going to do a podcast together. So that might be Claire's, um, Claire's in. Yeah, we've been meaning to start it for a while, but just like talking about like boomer stuff and Gen Z stuff, not to like out him as a boomer, but <laughs> I mean, 1958, that's right in the, that's right in the middle. Yeah. So, but, um, <laughs> Yeah, I just I don't think it's fair, but that's where I land. Yeah, so. I remember when it first came up, probably in high school, and I'm like, "You're a baby boomer," and he's like, "I am not. I am not. <laughs> I'm not like those people." I'm like, "You're in the middle." So, <laughs> so we thought we we have our URL. We've already reserved Boomzy, Boomzy dot com. Oh, that's uh, so cool. Yeah, and as soon as we you know sort of get to uh, recording mm -hmm. some of them, but that idea of a you know. Claire will break new ground for things that I've not heard of uh, or that maybe I have heard of and then we'll discuss them. So it'd be kind of fun. And that if it never goes cool. anywhere, it'd be really fun for us. Yeah. That's all that matters, right? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That is so cool. So Claire, um, have you, can you tell us a little bit more about the voiceover work that you have done? You said you did some more when you were younger. Yeah. When I was a kid, um, there are some that I don't remember, but I have the recording, like, was it Darigold? 
there was a dairy gold one uh dairy that was a regional dairy yeah um in the northwest there was a bank there was some a regional bank that uh, oh i remember that was the we had my classmates a couple of my classmates did it too and it was like what was it a penny you you had a line about finding a penny i found yeah. a penny a penny yeah they wanted like a measly child so <laughs> the funny thing is because Claire's always been really articulate and well spoken, even you know, as a very young kid. So the stuff that she did do when we'd go into the studio, they'd ask her to, you know, can you sound can you sound younger and and can you talk worse than that? So <laughs> you just have to yeah. dial it back and have, you know, less diction or less accurate pronunciations. Yeah, there's definitely a couple where I'm like, I have somehow I'm doing like all the speech impediments so it's probably like you know so they're encouraging that but um but I, that speaks I, to your talent that you can do that well yeah I mean yeah well thank you I, I, I appreciate it yeah um yeah I mean uh you know and children love to imitate so you know I always mm -hmm. would imitate my dad and he's doing you know a million voices all the time so definitely picked up on that and uh I I just remember a lot of times it was cool to be in the booth and to hear yourself say a line and hear it, hear yourself say it wrong and mm -hmm. catch it before they caught it and be like, no, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. Like that, that was not right. And, and do it again. And like, see if you could catch the feedback before it happened. I think that was the most fun part for me. Mm. That's really interesting. It's goofy too that. Cause I studied dialects and I used to do a lot of different you know video game voices in different dialects and and Claire was like I can't do that dialect and I go well you just pronounce the word this way um like we were talking about uh a piece of cake in Australia be a piece of cake <laughs> and just by spelling it differently and seeing it and not thinking of the accent but just and so uh and then Claire started doing an accent that I could never do. It's it's British, but it's it's the clenched teeth one that right. and that I, that are stolen. Right. <laughs> yeah. Never open the teeth. No, they never no. come apart the teeth. They stay together. <laughs> <laughs> and I wish yeah. that I'd had that in my wheelhouse when I was doing a lot of characters. I did not know that came from me. I was I did not know that came yeah. from me. Yeah. You, 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 you came with the the still teeth that killed me. It's, it's funny too, it sounds, right. and it forces you to not use like THs very well because, you know, right. the Turns lips can't come together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. just incredible. I wish I had this talent. <laughs> it's so, I mean, he's got a million voices in his repertoire. I'm hoping that like with age, they will come to me, <laughs> which... <laughs> It has happened with a few a few things. Um, like I think when I was younger, I couldn't do a lot of voices, but they like slowly come in. So, you know, one year at a time, I'm just gonna try to absorb more. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, you, it's cool. Do you practice a lot, or we, yeah, just you know, riffing. we tend to do them. Yeah, we tend to riff a lot when we go somewhere. Yeah. Hanging yeah. in the car and both doing Arnold Schwarzenegger yeah both do it trying to do Will Sasso's Arnold not Schwarzenegger. well I mean well we're getting there but not well my poor stepmom she's like okay honey you know you can call Claire and do that voice with her <laughs> but yeah things like that yeah that's fun it's fun for us yeah it's fun for us to hear <laughs> <laughs> I love it um, do you uh, hope to, you know, obviously continuing with the voiceover kind of thing, do you hope to work on a project together at some point in the future? Not just, you know, like you brought up the podcast, but like an actual something other than that. It'd be cool. We've done, yeah, we've sung together a little bit. It's been a long mm -hmm. time. Um, we both have uh, like, I, I have a lot of friends in, in the performing arts profession and there's a thing that borders on obsession where you have to do it and that makes you great at it because you put it above everything else and i never quite got that 
because I like to do lots of different things. And I think Claire's kind of the same way. So we don't like yearn to perform or yearn to do something together. Um, but certainly if, you know, when we start working on Boomsy and it could lead to who knows what, I mean, you know, we get along well, yeah. we have fun together. So yeah, it could be anything. Yeah, I totally do. And Claire's a really good writer and she won a playwright competition. Oh. Really? A yeah. lot. It was a long time ago. I was 16, but um, yeah, we had to write plays for class and then they submitted them for us to the Young Playwrights Program. And I, I didn't expect to win at all, but it was really cool. We got to work. I got to work with a director and a cast and it was really cool. They staged cool. an evening of them that, you know, of all the ones that were, that were chosen and it was. Uh, and they were really cute too. Some of they had like, they picked from every grade. So I was a sophomore, but they had like a kindergarten play and just like super cute, you know, about like dinosaurs and flowers, oh. and, like really cute to watch and just see like, or hear like a young mind, you know, like, you know, the gears turning and oh. it was really cute. What was yours about? It was about a was it about it was about a british couple where the wife had gone away to scotland and started this affair with this like super stereotypical scottish guy named angus and then returned home and angus wrote her a letter so i had like one of the actors come on like you know spotlight on him read this letter like man you know i love you and um <laughs> and uh her I'll husband live with you. Yeah. yeah. And her husband finds the letter before she does and he reads it, but he's like kind of sheepish and timid. And he's like, oh, like I wasn't supposed to read this. She'll be really mad that I opened her mail. So I'll just uh, I'll just write this guy back and let him down easy. And then the guy like doesn't give up. And then the husband and the Scottish man like start this correspondence where he's pretending to be his wife, but he's like slowly falling in love with the Scottish man. So then at the end, so like, funny, they meet in this and that's kind of a sad ending where the the scotsman is like i don't know who you are you're not the woman i've been writing to and the husband's like no no it's me like it's been me the whole time and anyway so that was what it was about wow that sounds like dramatic yeah. <laughs> yeah i don't know where it came from i'm like wow i was really like thinking about some powerful names. <laughs> seriously <laughs> that was our first question like what what made you think of this i don't know just wrote it. Yeah. I love that. Well, I mean, it sounded really good. I would have watched that. <laughs> yeah, it was it was fun to watch too. They had, they got pretty good actors and yeah. and the director did a nice job with it. It was, it was the audience was definitely you know hanging on what was going to happen cuz you could see that confrontation coming and you know so that it created a lot of tension. They had a super great actor for the Scottish guy too. He had the perfect like overblown scottish accent that i wanted so i love that yeah it was cool that's so cool it was a cool experience for sure um that kind of leads me into my nancy drew kind of questioning now yay well, <laughs> <laughs> what was it like obviously uh claire you were the young nancy in quotes in that game in silence by what was that experience like for you? Honestly, it's hard for me to remember, but I'm sure that it was awesome. I remember playing the game a lot. I'm not sure if it was Silent Spy. It must have been, though. But, like, you're in, like, a cabin. I just remember you're in a cabin, and there's, like, a snowstorm. And it it was probably super awesome for me. I loved the movie. Uh, as I said before, like I loved the Emma Roberts movie. I always wanted my life to be exciting like that, but I had a really, I am had a really great childhood. I'm super grateful for it, but because of that, like it was really comfortable. So I was like, no, I need more like adventure. Like where's my, <laughs> where's my Nancy Drew experience? Where's my mystery, my murder? But ultimately it spared me a lot of trauma that I didn't live the Nancy it's Drew lifestyle. Probably better for you. Yeah, <laughs> Let's exactly. be real. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But and also, Alexa, when we talked before, this it's that weird thing of where, like, you know, it represents the, the the game that 
you guys play in love ends up, you know, it represents like an hour of my day many years ago that I went in and voiced it completely out of context with no artwork or anything. And which is how Claire, she goes, I don't, what if I don't remember it? And I said, they'll just ask you questions about it because they remember your performance. And so feel free to prompt away. Cause that's, yeah. uh, that's always helpful to get back to that moment. And it's so cool to hear about, like, I, I think it's so cool. I did this one point and click game called, uh, dark, dark, dark something. The wax museum. It was about a wax museum and, and I found a playthrough of it on YouTube and it, just so cool to like hear the lines that I you know to hear that again so yeah totally prompt me let me know what I did it's <laughs> awesome <laughs> have you ever considered going and like playing the game again I would love to yeah I, I just got back into playing video games um my partner just moved in with me and he's got like every console so um, perfect <laughs> yeah exactly so I would love to I love that kind of a game um and yeah I feel like it's very like it's very it's good for my brain you know it's like it's it's very engaging and I remember really enjoying playing it when I was younger and getting mm -hmm. stuck at a lot of points that I wonder if I would still get stuck there it's very possible <laughs> yeah yeah it's probably more online that you can find to help you though <laughs> yeah yeah that's what i'm yeah some, some it'd be really fun on. to go back now because mm -hmm. then you it'd be like the playthrough you watched so hey yeah that'd be really cool because yeah. your voice is very different i think um one of claire's college friends was in town and i played a couple of recordings i made of her a long time ago and in my mind it's just claire doing you know these songs she made up and and then I thought, oh, wow, she really sounds different. <laughs> that is definitely a little tiny kid. Yeah. Um, so I'm sure it'd be a big stark difference to go back. Yeah. Yeah. I felt yeah. like my voice was more nasally back then. How old we were a child. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So it's my, it's yeah. okay. Yeah. But what year, do you know what year the Silent Spy came out? Um, I think 2013. 2013 okay that sounds right so like, yeah. i would have been 12 11, yeah you 12 did it in the recording um, oh my word. yeah it would have been probably 2011 that the session was mm -hmm. so so that's yeah you would have been 12 yeah it's half your life ago. yeah 13 wow years ago. <laughs> yeah that's that funny. is so crazy but also so amazing or like not 13 years, something yeah, 13 like years now ago. you're in your 20s and you can go back and like experience that again and be like, oh, wow, I did this when I was a literal child. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. That's so cool. Like a much smaller, smaller, smaller scale of a child actor's experience, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's yeah, really cool. I would love to go back. Like father, um, like daughter. That's our, that's my mainstream acting career too. Boop, this, these three movies in that one show mm -hmm. yeah um when you went in for that recording uh did the both of you go in like the same day or did you have to go in uh for separate uh days recording sessions that kind of thing we would have definitely been yeah we went in the same we day and, and i i do have a memory of uh because that clatter and din uh which is one of the studios in seattle mm -hmm. and I, I was in the control room and Claire was in the studio. And I just remember it being both sessions. I remember being really quick. Like they got what they wanted right away. It was a good director. And, you know, like, oh, great. Okay, we're done. You know. I do remember okay. them talking about the game too. And they were super excited for it to come out. And I remember them telling me about it and talking about her interactive and their goal. And I do remember that and like, getting really excited about that and you know you're like sort of coming into girlhood at that age so yeah. it was like a cool I remember getting excited about the game that's so neat how did you guys get involved with her interactive or I guess can you came in first how did how did you get into her interactive to work with them oh it was years ago different uh person was running the company and I got in um involved 
on a, it was more of a sort of messaging project because mm -hmm. our company is called Message Glue. And, and uh, at the time we had a different corporate name because it was a publishing company I started a long time ago. And, uh, and it was the CEO of her interactive that um, I would brought up that we had just found and secured, you know, all the message glue dot everything's and we were going to use it for a specific service. And she goes, no, you should change your company name because now I can tell everybody what you do with two words. And so, yeah, so I, I'm always thankful uh, to her and to her interactive for, uh, for that shift over that was in 2000 uh, 10. So, um, and so I did some projects and I think she asked at one point, cause she had, she knew that I had done a lot of games mm -hmm. and, uh, and at the time they were, it was, I think it was a pretty small part in the first one. And so, you know, would you come in and do Carson? And I said, sure. So they had, you know, they, they could go online and hear my voice in various things. So, you know, their producers were like, yeah, it was great. Yeah, well, you were in some pretty iconic games. I mean, at least iconic in the point and click world for people who were really young at the point when <laughs> those games were coming out, like mm -hmm. Freddy Fish and Pajama Sam and, you know, all of those Yeah. Uh, Spy Fox games. Yes. You were in all of those. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you had done quite a, quite a bit in that world. So I, I assume they were like, oh my gosh, like, we've got to get this guy to do a voice for us. <laughs> yeah, and I had been, at that point, I had done two or three of the Halos. Yes, Halo, Destiny. Um, and then Destiny came mm -hmm. later, I think. Well, actually, yeah, Destiny came. I can't remember when the first one was. Um, They were, I mean, those are really the two big uh, mm -hmm. companies that I would name at Bungie and her interactive because, because of what, you know, Megan did at the time uh, for mm -hmm. me from a business standpoint and getting to play Carson. Yeah. And Bungie, I auditioned for and got in the very first game. And they always brought back the people who were in the first game and found mm -hmm. a role for them, no matter how small, and paid us double scale because that game had launched them into the stratosphere. Yeah. It was such a cool thing to do. I, I got to talk on their 10-year uh, documentary that they did. I said, it's just like, as a voiceover person, that never happens. Like, you just get kicked to the curb when they get the new voice to do whatever. And no one ever even necessarily necessarily tells you you're not it anymore you know mm -hmm. you just don't get the call so just to find that role no matter what it was and even when new people came in the last remaining guy at Bungie the last time I worked there the guy who came in from LA said I have no idea who you are and the guy from Bungie said this is Ken he's been in every game we've ever done we always find wow. a role for him and he goes okay fine and then we did it and he goes oh okay I guess you're okay at this and, um, but then that guy left. So, uh, I don't, I don't know that there'll be any more Bungie games. Yeah. And now okay. they're owned or Halo's Microsoft. Yeah. Now, and they, so. yeah. yeah, various things got bought and moved and, you know, nothing ever stays the same. You just get good at, it will change. So just roll with it. So what was your experience with working with her interactive, like in voiceover work like like what how was how was your directing with that and how was how was working with other voice actors well i didn't really i mean typically when you voice a game you're all by yourself because mm -hmm. those files are all separate sure so you, so the director is hearing the other person and occasionally they'll play you like they played me some of nancy's lines because i think they'd already recorded them and yeah. said, this is how, this is the response we like. Can you kind of tailor your inflection of the question to mm -hmm. match that? And, and I'd done it a lot. So I'd usually give like, you know, the same line three or four or five times, however many, each mm -hmm. time a little bit different so that they could pick the one that matched. Mm -hmm. But the thing about her and her, because some of the games, like when you're, when you're, Hey, Halo, I had to do, you know, a million dying sounds. Yeah. <laughs> you die, this is a quick death. This is a longer death, you know. But with her interactive, you have that great, rich Nancy Drew storytelling. So, and I'm a dad and I have a smart daughter. So it was always kind of, I, I wouldn't say necessarily the easiest 
acting job, but it was some of the most rewarding stuff that I've done because it I got to just really kind of live in being myself and what I know really well. Um, and then they were very clear. They always had good directors. Mm -hmm. So, and they were well-written. All the lines were, you know, I write too. So I, that was kind of a downfall sometimes when I'd have mm -hmm. to read something where the writing was iffy or yeah, I'd accidentally correct it and then go, <laughs> I'm sorry, I think I read that. And they'd go, oh, no, actually, I think that grammatically correct that way. You know, the things you little sneaky things you do. I never had to do that with her interactive. It was always just clean, easy, clear, direct. And uh, and that makes it fun. But then it's over really fast <laughs> and harder to remember. It's like it was very pleasant and it was gone quickly. So. Yeah, I feel like they're very careful with the Nancy Drew story. Like mm -hmm. they very, they just have a lot of care and love for it, and it's, mm -hmm. you know, obviously that's reflected in the writing and the in the gameplay and, um, yeah. There's just, I mean, who wouldn't love the story? So, yeah, that's, you know, that's nice too. They weren't sloppy with it at all. So, that's so good to hear. And you seem to have really resonated with the character as well, which makes it just that extra step above mm -hmm. you know like for us we can tell when we're playing we're like oh they like felt it <laughs> if that makes sense oh that's that's really lovely compliment thank you yeah. um yeah it was i mean that was the easy part i think the very first time it was i think it was that session that your last one where they did some little promo thing for youtube about playing Carson. And that was the first time that I'd said, well, yeah, I have a really smart daughter. So, you know, and I care about her well being. So it's kind of, you know, in the zone. Um, and I remember talking about that at that session a little bit to somebody with a video camera. Um, so, <laughs> but it was, yeah, it, it was that. And you know, also going in, like the people I played and Halo, there were, you know, characters nobody knew before they appeared on screen, but the Nancy Drew iconic characters, you know, you feel the responsibility to be respectful and really give it your best shot. We appreciated that as fans. <laughs> I can tell you for sure. It's definitely, like, nobody has ever been like, oh, they just didn't do a good job on that. You know, like I've never heard anything like that. Like we oh, that's always cool. really respected your work as Carson. And um, I mean, I feel like people tend to prefer your work as opposed to like the previous guy. <laughs> um, like when we think of Carson, we think of Alibi and Ashes Carson. We think of Silence Why Carson, you know, like that's who we think of, mm -hmm. even though, I mean, me, Alexa, most of the fans, probably at least half of the fans, grew up with the games and therefore saw those other characters first. But then yours kind of lasted. And you've also been in more than any other person. So Oh, cool. <laughs> I didn't know that. Wow. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. So and you're in the new game, right? I'm kind of the step Carson. <laughs> um, is there a new game out? Not yet. Um. I think I signed so many non-disclosures when I record <laughs> that I I don't know. Now I don't, okay. it's hard to remember the session, but, and how long ago it was, but I would think there'd be a new game at some point. So hopefully I'm in it is my feeling. I never take I it for granted until it's released. <laughs> I mean, even stuff that, you know, like there was years ago, there was a show that filmed up here called Northern Exposure. Oh, yeah. It was about like, it ran for six, seven, eight seasons. It was a really successful show. And I was in one episode of it. No way. Super cool. I was so excited about it. And then I knew the guys at the studio where they did all the sound sweetening. And and uh, I went in one morning and and Peter, same guy who owned Clatter and Din, um, I came in and he goes, buddy, they cut you out. No. And I went, well, and... It was a small part and it was a three part joke and I was B <laughs> they cut out the middle and, yeah. but they left me in for screen actors guild said 18 frames. So that's a little over half a second and I still get paid for my Northern exposure 
appearance and uh, in the deleted scenes on the DVD. So. Hey, and that's yeah. why they have the union. Yeah, yeah. seriously. Yep. And and those checks are now like 20 cents or usually <laughs> less than the uh, postage stamp. Yeah. That must be just so heartwarming when you receive one of those. <laughs> it's cool because I did a bunch of Bill Nye the Science Guy too. And and mm -hmm. uh, so I, I get a, you know, it's the same company, Disney Buena Vista, that sends the um, Northern Exposure and Bill Nye. And it's usually, I don't know, last year I think it was nine dollars and seven cents or something that it's hey. cool to go hey look i'm yeah. an actor <laughs> but it's so i so i never like if the when the game comes out if i'm in it then yes i'm in it that's the way yeah everybody i know who and my wife is an actress as well and we have we go we have that disease where we're like i'm not going to count on it until it is right <laughs> in front of me or a contract is signed or the game is there or the show airs. And I went, that's my face. So, yeah. Well, there was a video that her interactive posted on their social media. I want to say last April. So almost a year ago now that you were in. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. So I'm pretty sure you're in it. <laughs> oh, voice in the, in the studio voicing. Yeah. Something? Oh, very cool. I gotta Yay. Yeah. Then I say, awesome. Oh, yes hopefully <laughs> i'm in that promo video anyway so yeah yeah you did something <laughs> well and it sounds like you know and i don't know anything about the rest of the process i just you know they would write me an email and say would you would you do this and i say yes of course i will and anything that continues beyond one time is a gift mm -hmm. so the fact that they you know put me in the promo and they they seem to like the that father daughter relationship um you know that that's a gift so yeah i hope i'm in there i hope so too it's been really dynamic and we really appreciate it cool thank you team ned or team frank ned <laughs> ned always ned <laughs> Good. That's the right answer. I have a, I have a soft spot. Yep. Ken, how about you? If if Nancy were to get married, who would you want to see her get married to? Uh, well, Claire's good judgment. I'm going to go with Ned. Then I'm going to say but Ned <laughs> was played in the movie by Max Thoreau, Thurio, right? The mm -hmm. guy from uh, from Seal and and now Fire Country. Which is really not a very good show. So <laughs> so I might have to rethink it. Oh, but I'm sure he's the star. He wouldn't be Ned anymore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's It'd grown out of his Nedness. I just yeah. love how like sweet Ned always is and like and caring and um you know, yeah, that's that's my yeah, that's my I'm team Ned. Based on that description, team Ned. There you go. <laughs> And uh, my final question for the both of you is because uh, her interactive and the games have been going on for over 25 years. So what is it like for the both of you to be a part of this, all the, these projects and things? That's so awesome. I mean, I didn't even know that there was such a community behind it, but it's so awesome. And like, I feel like, oh, that's so cool. And my, I have like the IMDB credit and I just, oh, I feel like a little, little star. <laughs> no, it's just cool. And it's such a cool thing to be a part of, like, just, you know, growing up with the books and, um, and that movie. I just love that movie so much. Um, and it's just fun. Like, you know, also just wanting to have more mystery and like, excitement in my life but then knowing that like I was like a part of the the lore or whatever you know the the stories and it's really cool I didn't know that it had been going on for 25 years that's crazy that's older than me just yeah, by that, a little bit yeah that's I did not know that either since it was what in the in the aughts I think when I first met and worked with her interactive mm -hmm. um but I you know, I feel the same way. Like I said, if it anything that repeats is a gift and to be part of something that is so iconic and so so much a part of our culture and 
and you know young women like you who are excited about it and resonate with it and found value in that that I didn't give you that other people created it. My performance was a tiny little piece, but to be a part of something that creates that kind of goodwill and excitement and, you know, drama and, you know, good feelings in your tummy kind of stuff. Uh, that's really humbling. I think it's, you know, it's hard to ask for more than that. So. Yeah. All right. So Ken, have you ever had a character or, or like a voice that you've done that you just absolutely hated to do? Ooh, that's a good question. Yes. And it was my own fault. Um, I auditioned years ago was for a CD-ROM kind of learning game. And my audition was a voice that was easy to do. It was sort of like this guy a year. Um, but it's hard to keep up with. And the guy said, uh, according to the new union contract, I have you for four hours. And he kept me for every minute of those four hours doing lines over and over again. And I just had the worst headache ever. <laughs> and I was like, I've never going to audition for anything with a voice that I don't want to do for a long period of time. It's like in um, Wayne's World, the movie, um, Dana Carvey played Garth, you know, the sidekick. Mm -hmm. And he famously says he played his brother because that's exactly how his brother talked. But he had, to, he had to put his, I don't do Garth, but he had to put his mouth and his jaw a certain way. And he said on those long days on the set, he would get so sore and, you know, yeah. taking, taking ibuprofen and, you know, rubbing his jaw. And it, so don't do that to yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure but that's the only one that I ever really felt like I was scared sometimes with all the dying. Cause I don't, I finally got to the point where I'd say, if I have to scream, let's put it at the end. Mm. And I did find out after playing a pirate one time that if I drank chocolate milk during the session, I, that it was no problem to, you know, have something. Because it was like kind of phlegmy. Because you could grind on the phlegm instead of your own throat. Yeah. Right, yeah. That's oh, kind of milk. The... Yeah. Milk brings forth the congestion. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I go for chocolate because I just made me feel better about myself. <laughs> That is so great. But like, what a hack. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's a good one. If you like, I have friends who, um, you know, one guy I sang in bands with for years, he could scream like the screamiest scream ever singing and, uh, and raspy Greg. Yeah. And he, nothing, he just go right back to, you know, nothing. Everything yeah. voice is fine. I do, you know, rough it up one time, try to get some sort of a scream going and, and I'm like, okay, I can't talk for two days. Uh, so. yeah. yeah. My husband tells me that there's like a method for that. He's really into like metal and like, you know, mm -hmm. he's like, oh, well, this, the screamers, they're trained, you know, they can do this for long periods of time because they know exactly what, and I'm like, how is that even possible? <laughs> I know. It's so impressive. He's totally right. Remember the guy? Yes. We did a job for a software company and one of the developers was explaining exactly that. And I have a little video of him talking about how it's really just classical music but the placement remember alex last time we talked about like where you put the voice and uh i think i did the beatles for you guys at uh that uh, my friend pat fraley in la was a way he explained placement like nasal placement hard palate back of the throat and then uh soft palate mm -hmm. and yeah. and watching this guy sing and turn these beautiful musical notes into this dark earthy scary sound but it was still you could hear the music in it and it was the best explanation ever i should try to find that and share it with you that is so cool yeah it was it was really cool we 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 were all we're sitting in a awesome. bar at the end of the day just going oh my god I said, please let me please let me video you so i could show my daughter it was just like you said like you could you We'll go into it and then just be talking completely normal. Yeah, I don't know how people do that. Or like, I really love horror movies. So like, you know, women like uh, like Mia Goth, like her screaming. Um, I mean, she just 
sells it and yeah. that's such a skill I mean I yeah I would be like you I couldn't talk for a long time after that but oh yeah talk the milk it's a skill <laughs> <laughs> it's the chocolate milk. The milk. Yeah. Oh my goodness. No, I remember like as a kid, like watching movies with my family, and my dad would be like, they hired her because she can scream. <laughs> yeah. It's a skill. You don't think about it as a skill, but it's yeah. There's a great old movie that um I think John Travolta was in. He played a sound man and um and there ended up being like this serial killer and thing, but he needed like the perfect scream for this horror movie and he couldn't find it. And he listened to a whole bunch of people trying to audition and then ended up that at the end, he sadly used the scream of his girlfriend who the serial killer had killed. That was a bleak movie. Brian De Palma, who made really like horrible bleak films in the eighties oh. and early nineties. Wow. But it was like, that was a good scream. And you could walk away going, didn't really kill her. She's an actress. She had a good scream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she got yeah. to get her check and go home. Yeah. <laughs> not real. Not real. Yeah. Love it. All right. My last question for you guys is, could you tell us a little bit about what you guys do outside of voiceover work? Well, I'm a waitress currently. Um, just started doing it. Never thought I could do it. It's kind of like acting. Actually, it's a lot <laughs> like acting. <laughs> um, you, yeah, you have to act like you love the public. Um, <laughs> it is an acting job. I used to be a waitress and I totally know what you mean. I had a waitress yep. voice. Do you have a waitress voice? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm building it. I, I just started doing it not long ago. So sometimes I'll catch myself like, well, there was one time I caught myself just saying, what do you want? I was like, okay, I need a re no, can't do that. <laughs> um, yeah. but yeah, I mean, definitely I have my script, like, you know, Oh, are you still enjoying this? You know, mm -hmm. Oh, let me take that out of the way for you. No, 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 it's no worries. I'll take that off the bill. You know, so mm -hmm. you yeah. should try the, are you enjoying this? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> You're you like another order. A bit too low. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I don't know um yeah so I'm just a waitress right now it's it's uh it's not a lot of hours a week and it's good pay and mm -hmm. yeah I don't know I think one day I might go back to school I was thinking about doing um like a counseling degree oh, I have cool. a degree in sociology so I was thinking about doing like a master's and getting into oh. that but I think I'm not quite ready to go back to school I'm still having those intense anxiety dreams about not attending lectures and then having a final so oh yeah totally understand you there I I'm a college dropout so like <laughs> yep, yeah <laughs> yeah a lot of my friends a lot of my friends dropped out they're like no I'm not doing that so I yeah those, totally get you those yeah. dreams never go away mm -mm. I know that's the thing so I don't know if I want them to be I'm I'm now I'm having the server nightmares too so <laughs> I just need a break. And those never go away either <laughs> so, oh my gosh yeah I'm just adding adding on to the nightmares but yeah um yeah so that's what I do and I go I like to spend time outdoors and mm. well, running and um I have an old cat and I oh. like to give him medicine and prolong his life. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that's what I do that's wonderful <laughs> can't even come close to topping that answer that's a good answer <laughs> um I am very fortunate that I get to work with my wife. We we met um, a little later um, and we went, oh my God, you're my person. This would be, you know, the, kind of hoping my whole life that I would meet and never thought it was possible. Mm -hmm. So we said, let's build a company around what we do so we can work together as much as possible. So that's the start of Message Glue. And mm -hmm. we help, uh, Anna's a coach and helps um people all over the world to just f feel more comfortable when they're presenting their ideas. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I do a lot of writing for companies and helping people get their story straight, you know, and find the interesting stories that are in their companies that they can tell to each other or to their customers or that help motivate people and inspire people. So, That's really wonderful. Yeah. It's really fun. And sometimes it, occasionally I'll write a script for a video or something and then I'll read it to a client and they say, well, would you do the voiceover? Cause you kind of seem like you, that, you, you read it pretty well. Like, <laughs> okay, sure. 
<laughs> I happen to have a thousand dollar microphone. I can do that for you. <laughs> That's so great. Yeah, this guy's been around a long time, but um, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, it adds mm -hmm. uh, about twenty five percent masculinity to my rather reedy vocal register. <laughs> Gives me a little, little extra low end. <laughs> It's better than this fifty dollar thing I got here. So, <laughs> I mean, like, it sounds great. So. Yeah, you guys sound great. And the oh, thank you. Claire's on a fifty eight, which is the classic rock and roll mic, which is why all of her answers rocked completely. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. So, do you have any hobbies like uh, giving cats medicine or? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of giving medicine. We had a, we lost our little dog we had for almost 15 years uh, right before Christmas. Yeah. I'm sorry. I had a dream about him last night and I woke up. I dreamed about him. Weeping in the dream. And I woke up I had the same and then I went, I'm not crying but in real life. But I went back to sleep and then I was crying again in my dream. Yeah. I had the same oh experience God. last night where I and I was weeping and I woke up and I was like, I wonder if I cried in real life but i don't think i did yeah that's wow. so weird but last night too wow yeah three times weird. last night and i and i told anna about it a little bit and i said i got i don't think i can recount the dream without just gonna fall apart but we just yeah. you know he was a part of every second yeah. of almost mm -hmm. 15 years so so we have another dog who's 12 and lily is um you know she's very chill mm -hmm. um and I play some guitar and um, and I, I like to write and I'm always looking for creative things to do. But right now we're doing a little DIY bathroom remodel. That's fun. It, it is terrifying <laughs> and exhausting, but it's pretty fun. Here's a little picture of our dog. You don't have to look. At oh, no, go ahead. I can. He's, he's yeah, there's the boy. Oh, so cute. Yeah, he was uh, an Irish Jack, they call uh, mm. that breed. It's a. It's not a Jack Russell, but they look fairly similar, but they have short legs. And they were the ones and that the hands. hunter would carry along on the horse and then put <laughs> down and they go into the hole and pull the rabbit out. Oh, that's so cool. Just the Jack Russell's better cousin. Yeah. yeah Shorty yeah. Jacks <laughs> in Ireland. They call them Shorty, a Shorty Jack or a Pudding Jack. That's, pudding. Yeah, I love pudding Jack. a Pudding Jack. That's, yeah. that's our little Pudding Jack there. That is so cute. Oh my goodness. Yeah, they're yeah. Yeah, he was the weirdest dog. I mean, I think I've ever met. He was super strange, but wonderful. Yeah, we miss that dude. Yeah. Because he yeah. wouldn't leave you alone. So you always knew, you know, and working from home the last four years, you know, on lots of Zoom calls with clients, and you just you'd feel him staring at you. Like, <laughs> I want to do something. I don't know what it is, but you figure it out. <laughs> that's how my cat is my cat is always with me I'm a streamer and he's always like in my lap and people are like oh my gosh it's Salem again <laughs> <laughs> Salem is so cute it's black yeah. cat yes oh great I had Amy. a black cat growing up named Blackie oh that's a I love name black cats are the best they are they are the best they're super chatty I don't know if you're Cat is super chatty, but no, oh, he will talk. Fine. Yeah, <laughs> he will talk to you. Yeah. Oh, just and the kids greatest. black and white. So. Yeah, I have a tuxedo right now. But, yeah. Oh, yeah. I had a tuxi growing up. Yeah, they're just they're the super strange as well, but the best. And cats in general. Cats. I know yeah. that's so much personality. So yeah, yeah. Alexa, do you have any pets? No, no. I don't. I actually, I'm, I'm actually allergic to cats surprisingly oh. <laughs> um you could get but, a hypoallergenic cat i think uh, i know yeah. that there's hypoallergenic dogs oh. that mm -hmm. are out there yeah. so that's always like a possibility you know maybe yeah. some point in the future just not sure when that's gonna happen but you never know yeah there yeah. there are people i've known too after a while depending on the cat sometimes it's the like my father-in-law did little shots of bee venom till he would could tolerate and mm -hmm. get over his bee allergy. And um, I think they can sort of do that with cats. The the yeah. last animal that broke my heart before Caper, that was our little dog, was Ticker, who was a very weird, amazing, kind of <laughs> half wild tabby cat. 
Oh. Who, who tore lots of yeah. pieces of my skin open. Came <laughs> off the street and he chose this house because it didn't have a kid in it. And then I was born and <laughs> and they always tell me that he um he would try to steal my warmth. So <laughs> hear from the other room, I'd be in my little bassinet and they'd hear uh, uh. <laughs> and then they'd go in the room and they'd see his little ears sticking out of the bassinet. <laughs> He's just stealing all my warmth. It was a really <laughs> rattly in the process, but yeah. Yeah. It was a rattly bassinet. So he, when he jumped in, you'd hear ticka ticka ticka. And then you go over and you could see the little Batman ears up. And you go, You cannot lie on her face. He's like, But she's so warm. We'd like, No, you cannot murder the child. And then he'd give up and he'd leave her alone. So Yeah. Such a cat thing. Oh my goodness. Yeah. My my two and a half year old loves to torture our cats. Oh yeah. Yes. So fun. Oh, that's yeah, that's a great that's a great age for cat torture too. Cuz it just it's like that keep coming. Yeah. Yeah, I have one that's a really really little cat and he was like the rent of his litter or something. I don't know, but he's really small and my son who is also pretty small thinks, "Oh, perfect. I can pick this one up." Cuz Salem is huge, so he can't he does not attempt to pick him up, but he'll pick him up and he'll take him around the house with him. And I'm just like, oh, this poor cat. <laughs> Has cats Liam are ever picked up? Huh? Oh, what were you saying? I was just going to ask you, Susie. Has Liam ever tried to pick up this the smaller cat and carry him upside down? Oh, yes. <laughs> he does it all. He also will pick him up by his tail, which is the worst. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Uh, just this afternoon, he was dragging the cat around by the tail. And I was like you can't do that <laughs> yeah but the cat takes everything in stride he's such a such a darling like cat cats are great most cats That's what i was gonna say guess. like cats are surprisingly really patient with human yeah. children i think they they understand like that it's a baby that they yeah are, that they can't like claw or bite like even if the baby is i think they get that it's not malicious intent try to kill you when you can't sit up but then once you're moving they give up and tolerate you they're like oh you could probably hurt me (laughs) yeah yeah and you me and ticker got along well no yeah he used to sleep on my chest in the morning yeah before i was the only one that he bit like (laughs) he would bite me but yeah he bit you a lot he bit hard he draw draw blood and he once he grabbed on to to bite my arm. I was sitting on the couch with Anna and he 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 just I'd pet him for a while and then he'd go, Now I bite you. And he grabbed a hold, but it was Anna's arm. And as soon as he grabbed it, he stopped. A lot of his claws receded and he got up and just walked slowly away. Oh, that's and he so couldn't have seen the difference, but he'd like, Nope, that's not the person I injure. <laughs> there, there he is. <laughs> Cats know. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's just no. Oh, that's so great. Yeah, I love them. <laughs> we love the animals. I love it. Big, big cat person over here. So I love yeah. this conversation. But um, we have like totally hijacked Alexa's podcast here. I'm sorry, Alexa. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's okay. I think we're kind of tag teaming, I think, Susie. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, we got this. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, uh, Where can both of our listeners follow you if you have any kind of social media presence um i don't have much of a social media presence but um uh, my instagram is just my name claire boynton with an extra e at the end of claire like claire e boynton um and then i have a tiktok <laughs> excuse me uh and i have it's a couple weird videos on there, but I don't remember <laughs> what my username is. Um, is TikTok the same? No, it's not the same username. Uh, oh, Boynton Claire Eight is my TikTok. So wonderful. Nothing crazy. I think there's just videos of my cat on there, me being weird. I think I, <laughs> I, I, I still have a Twitter, um, which is I refuse to call X. Yeah. So, so does everybody else so it doesn't really matter um i don't do a lot of posting though um and i'm on facebook just by my name um because i'm old and i'm on facebook and every now and then because i do have a, a little bit of a filmmaking background i think i should 
figure something out with TikTok, but we'll see. We'll see if that day comes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Claire can teach me how to use it. Yeah. I mean, I'm not an expert by any means, but. But your videos are funny. So oh, that's oh, what I need. Some of them. Magic. <laughs> some of them. But, yeah. Maybe that can be a very special episode of your podcast. Oh, yeah. Yeah, true. Yeah. We yeah. could have like boomsy, uh, boomsy idea bouts on mm -hmm. TikTok real quick. Introduce mm -hmm. the topic and then mm -hmm. and the smackdown comes later in the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like a YouTube style, like, you know, you make a TikTok on the podcast. Like the process of making it could be funny. Oh, yeah. That would be cool. Maybe we will do yeah. that. Yeah. You should. Thank you. We'd love to see it. You're welcome. Okay. <laughs> Episode one. <laughs> so when we get Boomsy going too, I, I, um, we yeah, then we'll we, probably we hope that video. we can count on you both to be a guest at some point. Absolutely. Cool. Definitely. Yeah. And I'm a millennial though. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's good. We'll bring bring in the millennial. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's can okay. I'm a boomer. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. It's okay. Um, you actually you have my email, so whenever, you know, and I can always get in touch with Susie too, just to great coordinate all that kind of stuff. So. Absolutely. I love it. Cool. Yeah. If the, if they let a boomer on it, millennial can come on there. So <laughs> thank you. Yeah. And then we have a I have a younger cousin who is I think I think I'm like old Gen Z and he's really like young gen z like cusp gen z mm. alpha um so he could come on too sam sam mm. yeah 2009 he's, is that it's gen z still well 2000 i don't know the alpha i don't want any like actual generation alphas because i don't understand them yet. what you don't want my two-year-olds <laughs> <laughs> no actually actually that could be a great perspective to two-year-old perspective yeah um, you know he's he he has a lot of words <laughs> That's great for a podcast. That's a real, Give them a mic. That's a fun time when when the words are coming out in all sorts of different ways. Yeah. Oh yes. Oh yes. I hear so many things and I'm just like, where did you get that? <laughs> I can I give you my uh advice a parent gave me. Yeah. It's too, it's too late for the first one, which was um there will come a period when your child is eight months old when they can sit and and have fun doing something and not crawl or move. And he goes, that is a moment when parents can go, ah, I can do something else. And he said, the phase lasts days and then they're moving. Um, so that was the first one. But the other one was basically related to that is that each of those phases, like mark them well with your record keeping because they go so fast. Yeah. And even four years of high school and four years of college. Like I go, well, Claire's going to be in high school now for four years. That's, that's a long time, four years. It seemed like flew by. So yeah. there's something about it when you're focused on the child, it just mm -hmm. time speeds up. So enjoy yeah. every minute. Oh goodness. I am trying. He's growing so fast. Like it is so it is so crazy to think about how I'm like, I was just pregnant, wasn't I? I was just pregnant. That was three years ago. <laughs> yeah. You know, and then I and then I look at him and I I do these videos on my Instagram, like some reels of him. Um, I put a picture on the screen and I say, Hey Liam, what is this? And he tells me. And his little, you know, his words are just so cute. And he says it in a little, you know, his little lisp, you know, and it's so cute. But I was, I was watching some of those back today and I was like, he doesn't talk like that anymore. Like he talks like a child now. He doesn't talk mm -hmm. like a baby anymore, you know? So I'm like, I don't even know if I can make those videos anymore because he is out of that phase. It's so wild how quickly it goes. Yeah. Well, you make new and different ones. And then yeah. in, in less than 22 years, you'll just do a podcast together like this. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Claire, you're talking so good. <laughs> amazing <laughs> i love it i practiced yes. for today your your words are good words <laughs> <laughs> oh so great it is so wonderful to see you guys working together and also it has been just so lovely to meet you too especially as a person who has been a fan of the games for 23 years <laughs> wow been, that's so cool that's awesome. yeah 
been really wonderful to get to talk to you guys. Thank you. We, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I think we both feel the same. It's just it's an honor to do it. And it's so cool that it's, you know, the affecting lives and exciting people and, and that they're all about actual good things like learning and being curious and all the mm -hmm. qualities mm -hmm. that as you move through life, they're good to have. Yeah. So yeah. cool. Yeah. Thank you both so much. It was really, really yeah, fun. Thank you, thank you both. Yeah, thank you both so much. And Ken, it was nice to see you once again. And Claire, thank it you. was nice to meet you for the first time. <laughs> yeah, great to meet you as well. <laughs> well, if you need anything else, uh, let us know if some amazing piece of audio blew up and, and you'd like a retake. We, we can do some voiceover if you need it. <laughs> yes. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Cool. Yeah, thanks. Thank you.